In one of the previous videos, we talked about how to interpret the results of the oculomotor exam, but specific for the tests that are more suggestive of a peripheral vestibular deficit or a hypofunction. And then we went on to talk about the exercises prescribed for those conditions. We're going to switch gears now and talk now about the components of the oculomotor exam that are specific for central vestibular deficits and what to do when you run into this. So what test results are specific for central vestibular deficits? Well, first of all, if somebody presents with abnormal smooth pursuit, abnormal convergence, abnormal saccadic eye movement, abnormal VOR cancellation, and then also there's one that we normally think of as a peripheral test, but it also has a central result, and that's a positive gaze evoked nystagmus test. Now, remember that depending on the nature of the nystagmus, it can indicate either peripheral or central deficits. So when you have direction-fixed nystagmus, that indicates a peripheral pathology. But when you have direction-changing nystagmus, that's indicative of a central vestibular deficit. Now remember that in general, if somebody has a central vestibular deficit, the results of these tests should match up to confirm or rule up a central pathology. So there are cases where someone might have one isolated abnormal or positive test, but in general, if somebody actually has a central vestibular deficit, so following a traumatic brain injury, or maybe they have multiple sclerosis or something like that, these tests should all match up to confirm and rule up that pathology. So if somebody presents with these impairments, what is your treatment approach? And in general, the treatment approach for central vestibular deficits is going to be habituation. You're going to be prescribing habituation exercises. However, we can be a little bit more specific than this. So individuals with a central vestibular deficit can also have impaired gaze stabilization. Now recall that the tests that are more suggestive of peripheral vestibular deficits, so a positive head thrust test, a positive head shake and nystagmus test, and then a positive gaze evoked nystagmus test where you have direction fixed nystagmus, those are indicative of a hypofunction, but then the treatment approach would be adaptation, so gaze stabilization exercises, but those are all negative. And so how do you know if somebody has impaired gaze stabilization? Well, you're gonna give what's called the Dynamic Visual Acuity Test, or the DVA, and it uses this eye chart like this, and we covered this in a separate video. And recall that Dynamic Visual Acuity integrates both central and peripheral mechanisms, and so depending on the results of this test, it will indicate if somebody has impaired gaze stabilization. So the first result of this could be it's normal. Remember, normal for the DVA would be a two-line difference or less. And so if DVA is normal, then the person likely does not have impaired gaze stabilization, but they still require habituation exercises due to having a central vestibular deficit. Now the other result of the DVA could be that it's abnormal, so it's a three-line difference or more. Now they're still going to require habituation exercises because they have a central vestibular deficit, but having an abnormal DVA suggests that their gaze stabilization is impaired. And what do we do to promote gaze stabilization? We give an adaptation exercise. And remember from the previous videos, the main adaptation exercises that promote gaze stabilization are these right here. The most basic one, which is almost always given first, is the VOR times one. The VOR times one can be progressed into the VOR times two, which is more difficult, and it can be regressed into gaze shifting. And we've already talked about these in the previous videos within this playlist, but what we have not talked about is habituation. What are habituation exercises and what is their rationale? How do we do them? And that's what we're gonna be covering in the next couple of videos. So make sure to check those out. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of what to do if your patient presents with results that are consistent with a central vestibular deficit. As I mentioned in the next video, we're going to be covering habituation exercises. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.